A while ago, I took a look at a few examples of how games can become irrelevant, whether it be from being replaced, lack of sales, or the game just being plain awful. Today, I'm going to be doing the opposite and talking about examples where games can and have remained relevant even with some of them being decades old. Relevancy. A beautiful thing it is. To always remain topical no matter the time period, whether it be a historical figure, a one in a million car, a work of art. Or in this case, video games. To be relevant means to always be present in the minds of those that follow the medium it exists in. Just like how there are multiple ways a game can become irrelevant, there are many cases as to how a game can remain relevant. Being a masterpiece, getting consistent updates, having an active community, all incredible and diverse reasons for a game to remain as talked about today as it was when it first came out. So enough time wasting, enough dilly dally, enough rambling, enough setup, enough exposition, enough of this intro, enough suspense, enough delay, enough- What does it mean to be a masterpiece? Well, to me, when it comes to making a game, I feel there's always a bar the developers will set so they can give themselves something to work towards until it's eventually met. Sometimes that bar is really low, sometimes fairly average, but on occasion, that bar is sky high, only to be put there by people truly striving to make a masterpiece. And after years of hard work, dedication, and countless sleepless nights, they meet that bar. And then they exceed it, ascending to the heavens to reach an all new frontier never before seen in gaming, traveling beyond the horizon of comprehension, discovering new ways to define the world that is video games, becoming one with the technological universe it is- <clears throat> That's basically what it means to be a masterpiece. And because of that status the game holds, whether it be a Mario 64, an Ocarina of Time, or even the greatest masterpiece of all, Mario Super Sluggers, the game will forever be talked about in the gaming world. Whenever a new 3D Mario comes out, people will ask, how does it compare to Mario 64? New Zelda? Is it better than Ocarina of Time? Majora's Mask? What about a new Pokemon game? Will I have just as much fun and love with it as I do with the first generations? Uh, the answer to that last one is no, by the way. Simply put, when a game is so good you literally can't say enough good about it, then people won't be able to say enough good about it for years after its release. Decades, even. Case in point, 3D Mario. Like I said before, even the oldest in Mario 64 is still revered today. Even with it being one of the first of its kind, it still holds up well with its expansive levels and player freedom, allowing them to tackle it however they want. Sunshine with its innovative flood and near perfect control to go with it. Galaxy 1 and 2 giving Mario the ability to run all around planets with an array of power-ups that bring more movement options to the table. 3D Land and 3D World. Mario Odyssey going back to what made Mario 64 so great, having even bigger worlds to explore, and the addition of Cappy making this one of the most original games in the series. I think it's safe to say that these games will remain relevant for a long time. Why? Because they're a masterpiece. Updates have really become the biggest trend with games this decade, and I can see why. Game's broken? Patch it. Game doesn't have enough content at launch? DLC. Just want to keep the game fresh? Update it. It's a great way to keep players coming back every once in a while, and allows for the developers to fully flesh out the game they already made, instead of having to make a completely new one so soon. <sighs> Probably the biggest examples of this are Battle Royale games, Apex Legends, Fall Guys, and... <laughs> Fortnite. <laughs> Regardless of what you think of these kinds of games, yes, they are oversaturated, yes, the gameplay gets very samey after a while, and yes, seeing your favorite characters doing Fortnite dances makes you die inside, they still garner a consistently large player base, and these updates help keep the game fresh. Back when I used to play Fortnite consistently, I was always eager to see what was added, what changes were made to the map. It was fun to see the world evolve and the player base grow. Okay, I, I want to move away from Battle Royale games. Um, GTA 5. When it comes to updates, this game has got to be the top dog when it comes right down to it. Only after a year of its launch, there were updates for the game, each with a significant amount of content to warrant coming back and checking it out. Heist, lowriders, cunning stunts, bikers, import export, gun running, doomsday, there was just so much stuff being added. As soon as you finish experiencing all there is with one update, <coughs> they hit you with another. Sure, not all of them were as substantial as the ones I named, and the cars that were released alongside these updates are all 
stupidly overpriced, but the fact still stands that this game has remained culturally relevant even with it coming out on a now last, last generation console almost a decade ago. Moving away from updates now, when it comes to DLC, there's plenty of examples to choose from. Smash Bros adding characters and patches, Sword and Shield with the Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra, the Forza Horizon series has been adding an extra map or maps ever since the second game. Just like updates, these serve as a great way for players to get back into the swing of things or have a change of pace from what they had gotten so used to before, with the only difference being that DLC more often than not has more content for the player to warrant the price put on it. Updates, DLC, being a masterpiece, always for the company to make sure their game stays as relevant as it can be. But what about the fans? Can they do anything? <laughs> Yeah, they can. The clip you just saw was from EVO 2018, and while yeah, it is three years old, I believe it represents how much influence communities have in keeping a game alive. Obviously, the clip provides a perfect example of that. Fighting games. More specifically... <laughs> This game came out two decades ago, and I would argue it is more relevant today as it was when it first came out. The game is iconic for the moves and techniques that define its meta, wave dash, shine, rest, walk up slowly, and down smash, its fast paced gameplay trumping the game that came before and after it, even though the game is not finished, let's be honest here, it still carves out a deep niche in the competitive fighting genre, and has remained to be highly regarded as one of the best fighting games of all time. But Pichu is an F tier, so no, it's not. Game sucks. Speedrunning is another great example of how a game can remain relevant. Beating a game as fast as possible is really cool and interesting to watch. Sometimes, with the help of charity, you bet your bottom dollar communities are going to support it. What's that? Kingdom Hearts 2 is 30 hours long? Well, here's a guy beating it in 3 hours. Name's Bloody Biscuit. Uh, great run, by the way. Super entertaining. To see how much progress can be made, to see how much a runner can improve their time, is an amazing spectacle that no doubt will inspire someone to pick up the game they're playing to try out these techniques. I hate to retread here, but Mario 64 is just too good of an example not to talk about. There's so much you look at and just think, how was that possible? From 100% runs, to any percent runs, to zero star runs, this game is insane to watch at such a high level of play. And this keeps the game alive. That constant want that runners have to always want to improve their time will keep these games from ever dying. Or in other words, stay relevant. Alright, outro time. To see a game lose its relevancy due to the passage of time or whatever other reason it may be is a sad feat, but at the end of the day, it happened for a reason. But to see a game remain relevant for any of the reasons I mentioned in this video is truly an amazing sight to behold. If the game is made with the highest amount of quality and care, if it's remaining fresh with expansions of new content for players to explore or has the power of a loyal fanbase to keep it held high, I guarantee you it'll be here to stay. And that is beautiful. So let me know, what is your favorite way a game can remain relevant? Me personally, it's when a game is so good it will always be talked about. But that's all I have to say for now. So with that all said, I'm Easily Easy, and I'll see you next time.